Hello and welcome back to wireless communication lecture series. In this video, we are going to discuss about frequency division multiple access method. So as name suggests, we will divide the available resource in terms of a frequency and we will provide a multiple access to the user. So as you can see in this figure, we have a base station which has a one frequency band over here and we will divide that frequency band into the different frequency this frequency can also be called as a channel and each frequency will be allocated to one single user so here frequency one is allocated to user one similarly frequency two will be allocated to user two and frequency n will be allocated to user n and same thing is mentioned over here here we have frequency this axis is for time and this one is for the code so here we are dividing the frequency this particular available resources at base station will be divided in terms of a different channel so here this frequency are divided into channel 1 channel 2 channel 3 up to channel n and this channel will be allocated to user so the first point is assign individual frequency to user so in fdma we are assigning individual frequency to the user channel are assigned on demand to the user that means whenever user will be on call at that time the channel will be allocated to the user the important point is during the period of call no other user can share the same frequency band so let's say one user is using a channel one during the call and if any other user want to use the same channel then it is not possible and in fdd users are allocated pair of frequencies one for the forward and another for the reverse channel now let's talk about the features of fdm so first one is unused channel remain idle and cannot be used by other user so due to this we have a wastage of the capacity because each user will have allocated a single frequency or single channel and that that is dedicated to one user only so we have a wastage of the frequency once the channel is allocated bi-directional transmission is continuous and simultaneous between the mobile station and the base station so both uh, mobile station and base station can transmit and receive the data simultaneously in fdma channel bandwidth is relatively narrow so in case of let's say advanced mobile phone system they are using only 30 kilohertz frequency band so it is a narrow bandwidth system and due to narrow bandwidth the transmission time of narrow band signal is large and hence there will be a enough time separation between the two frame or the two signal so that will also reduce the inter symbol interference and due to that we don't required any equalizer or equalization circuit another features of fdma is it required fewer bit for synchronization complexity is lowered compared to the tdma now since fdma is continuous less overhead bit required so as we have a separate frequency for the uplink and the downlink so therefore we have it is a continuous transmission and therefore it required a less overhead However, in FDMA, the cost of cell site is higher because it will require a bandpass filter to filter out the channels as well as it will also require a duplexer. So, these two things will increase the overall cost of the system. And in FDMA, we require a tight RF filtering to minimize the adjacent channel interference because user having an adjacent channel frequency can be at a nearby location and due to that we need to take care the adjacent channel interference as filtering of the channel or the frequency is important in the fdma it will also generate the non-linear effect in the fdma so many channels says the same antenna at the base station and in the transmitter and the receiver circuit we have a different block like power amplifier or the power combiner or the mixer when operated at near saturation they become the non-linear and due to this non-linearity it will cause a signal spreading and generate an intermodulation frequency so 
So to understand intermodulation frequency, let us consider this diagram over here. Let's say we have a desired signal here, which is at 8 megahertz. And we have few narrowband interferer over here. Let's say they are at 10 megahertz and the 11 megahertz. Now this frequency or this signals we are passing through a non-linear system like transmitter and the receiver then at the output side it will produce the intermodulated products so these products are 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 and 2 omega 1 plus omega 2 so here we have a narrowband interferer of 10 and 11 megahertz so 2 omega 1 is 20 minus 11 that is it is it will be a 9 megahertz right and here let's say 2 omega 1 so 20 plus 11 so it will become a 31 megahertz so it can also affect some other signal but here in our case we can see here our desired signal is at 8 megahertz and due to this interferer it generate a one more signal over here which is at let's say 9 megahertz which is definitely going to interfere our desired signal. So this is how the intermodulated frequencies are causing an issue in our system and this is the effect of non-linearities. So intermodulated are undesired harmonics. So harmonics are generally like a multiplication of the frequency. So it, it can be let's say we have a 10 megahertz as a signal so 10 20 30 or it can be a, any even or odd harmonics also so intermodulation causes the interference with other channel and due to this interference we will observe the decrease in carrier to interference ratio so signal power to the noise power will reduce hence the performance will decrease due to this interference and mostly it causes the adjacent channel interference in the FDMA system and for this purpose we required RF filtering and hence the cost of the system is increased. So now let's talk about with FDMA how many number of users we can support in a one cell. So usually like let's say this is one cell right and we will have a one base station over here and there will be a number of user in this one particular cell. And we want to identify that if I have a particular resources with this base station in terms of a frequency that how many number of user I can support. So for that the number of channels simultaneously support FDMA system is given by n equal to BT minus 2 Bigar divided by BC. So here BT is the total spectrum allocation that what I am drawing over here let's consider this as a total spectrum in terms of a few megahertz we can consider let's say 2 megahertz or 20 kilohertz let's say just for an example so it's a total spectrum allocated to one base station the bigard is the guard band allocated at the edge of the allocated spectrum band so here let's say you are allocating one channel and for example one channel is of 1 kilohertz and after that you cannot directly allocate a signal to the next we need to provide some guard frequency over here and then we will allocate the next channel so that is a b guard and bc is the channel bandwidth overall bandwidth that we have for the one particular base station so based on this we can find out the number of channel n so let's consider one example to understand this concept in a better manner so if us amps cellular system is allocated a 12.5 megahertz of each simplex band and if bt is 12.5 megahertz bigard is 10 kilohertz and bc is 30 kilohertz find the number of channel available in a fdm system so it is really easy you can use this equation n is equal to bt minus 2 bigard divided by bc so we know that bt is given as 12.5 megahertz so it is multiplied by 10 raised to 6 minus 2 bigard is uh, 10 kilohertz so 10 into 10 raised to 3 and our bc the bandwidth is 
30 kilohertz so which is 13 to 10 raise to 3 so if you will solve this you will get this answer n equal to 416 number of channels so this one particular base station can support a 416 number of channel with all these resources so this is all about fdms system thank you so much for watching this video